purpose of art is to succeed, come through, perform, be the, the best human being you can be. It is a discipline. It is something that we do. Art is an activity, it's not an end product. The doing of art is the pay of art. If you're not enjoying it while you're doing it, do something else. Because all you're going to get is that. Hopefully some nice people will get to enjoy them. Make them believe in human beings, that'd be great. Why I do it? It just feels great to do it. It's a discipline. Why do you do yoga or Qigong or martial arts? Because it feels great as a human being. It's a wonderful way to spend your life as a human being. <laughs> it's a wonderful way to be alive. It's the one I enjoy the most. It's my way of living, for crying out loud, don't you see? It's not what I do, it's how I live. That's being an artist. <laughs> Cheers. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that is so great. <laughs> hey, you want to come into the studio? Let me show you. I'll lead the way. See? Carpe noctem. Seize the night. That's where it's at. This is a commission for a friend of mine. I still have a sunflower center to go and a little bit of detail here and there, but we're getting there. It's very close. A little bit of varnish will sink in the colors. It's been a lot of fun. First, I start doing things of this nature. You know, start with color pencils or crayons or whatever comes at hand. And I start with just, you know, hundreds of these things. You know, just color compositions, abstract color compositions. At this point, they're completely abstract and they're just color doodles, basically. And they may or may not become a painting eventually. I believe that this one, something like this may have triggered that painting that we're seeing, the last one, the, the one on the easel. As a matter of fact, it is. This, this sketch became that painting. See the reds and the blues or whites and, you know, it, it didn't have a subject matter at the time, but it was a color composition. I'm going to be working now on the center of a sunflower and I'm going to be helped. This sunflower is from maybe three or four seasons ago, so there's no way to capture it live. But with this amount of detail, I will be able to know how much information could have been there if I was looking at the flower in live and remind myself of what it felt and everything. And then I'll paint as much as the painting will require. The painting has its own needs, so it's hard to tell how much detail will go into it until I actually do the painting. I don't even know how much I'm going to paint into it. But, uh, but I have any degree of information that I may need to put down detail that remains botanically um, acceptable. This sunflower was never really part of this plant. There, uh, the leaves may have come from different parts. So, you know, you make a, a beautiful composition using elements that may have existed in nature. Take, for example, this, this, you have a, a, a dead lily there. I remember making a, a, a painting where I included this one lily, but I needed flowers looking, you know, towards the painting. So I used this bloom and used others that are alive to compose a frankenflower, if you will, or uh, maybe use leaves from a different plant that had excellent structure. The idea is to make a plant that is beautiful. It's an idealized composition using flowers as a subject matter. It's an idealization of a plant. Plants, the way I paint them, do not exist in nature. They always have blemishes, in insect bites, whatever. I do away with all that. I, I idealize completely the plant to make a plant that, should it exist in nature, it would be perfect. And uh, no such a bird, but in painting you can get away with idealizing things. It's one of the fun of, of painting as a, as a medium. You can idealize and, and create a world and, that is uh, beautiful. That's basically where it's at. I was always painting, and my first painting, and the, the, the oldest painting I have I, is when I was 14 years old. It wasn't even that bad. I liked it. I won some prizes when I was young, and, and people told me how, how 
talented I was, how easy it was for me to do it. And it was true. It, it, it was one of the things that I found easy to do, you know. But never really was serious about it. I went to architecture school, and that didn't work out so well. Uh, I moved to the States, made a living one way or another, always kept painting going. And one time, a miraculous thing happened. I mean, I had a gallery showing, a group showing, my first group showing. The gallery owner calls and tells me that somebody had made a low ball offer for a painting that I was showing here. The offer was for about a third of the price I was asking. And I grabbed the offer just because I, had, I didn't need the money at the time. I was doing OK. It, I just had to feel what it would be like to produce art and get paid for it so that I could survive and do things as one person, as opposed to be an artist in my spare time and you know, make a living somehow. And it worked wonderful. After I sold that painting, it became an obsession to become a, just an artist. It was completely obsessive. I met your mom. She was wonderful support. You need that. Without that, you're just doomed. You don't have a chance. This little cart has been my friend for a long time. I, I put my, I mix my paints in it and, and stuff. You know, this is my, my tray, all my paints, you know, all kinds of colors and different variations. It used to be fun when I had only two kinds of green. Now I have many more, and I still use two of them, but, <laughs> but I have them available. You always have your two that are your favorites, but it's nice to have the other variations around. These are my brushes. Uh, well, I have all kinds of brushes, but my favorite brushes inevitably are these. This is what I really work with. They're, they're, it's very hard on the wear. They, they wear poorly because we, I use them too much. So I use a lot of uh, uh, fan brushes also. Uh, I don't use as much uh, bristle as other oil on canvas artists would. Um, I depend more on sables and sable mixes. You have these wonderful sables with, uh, with, uh, mixed with uh, synthetic. They wear well and yet they keep their, their, it's a very stable brush, so they work well. But my, my favorite brushes are the tiny ones, you know. I have uh, all kinds of really tiny brushes. This kind of brush is also an old favorite of mine, these blending brushes. They're quite wonderful. This is an old brush, it's like a $3 brush. All synthetic, and yet they won't quit. It's been with me for maybe 10 or 15 years. I love painting with classical music as my background, and I cherish my system. And uh, top shelf would be the entire works of Bach, which are my priceless collection. Then we have whole shelves of uh, opera, vast collection of Mozart and Beethoven. The, the mood is very akin to painting. You can just go on painting for hours and hear some beautiful Mozart music. It keeps you going. These are the speakers. Uh, they are, these are the bass and this is the, the, the higher frequencies and, you know, two sets of six panels. This is what's left for me. After the painting is gone, I'm left with the photographs. And here I have my collection of all the work I have done since 1994. Start with still life number one and then, you know, row after row. Still life number 43, they're all numbered. I know them by number. They're still life number 43 with this, that, and that, but I know them by number. You can see the evolution of the style. The little stickers next to some of the photographs means that they're in inventory in some gallery. The rest are all gone. And uh, some of them are at a friend's house. If the paint has dried or if I want to enlarge this, I go with a razor blade. Razor blades are my best friends. I have, I mean, if you look there, those are used razor blades. I mean, we go through them by the hundreds. My main drawing tool is the razor blade. Every, every little thing here, all the little details were carved into the background with a razor blade. Um, it's the, the most precise tool that I can control. You know, let's see what else do we have. Uh, little towels to wipe out brushes. I don't know. Uh, variety of tools, what else? 